Everybody Googles everything, especially potential customers or employers, and a business or personal online reputation can make or break you. If negative search results or reviews are impacting you, Webamax is here to help. Our proven process restores your online reputation quickly and effectively, and it matters. Don't let negative results control your narrative. Visit GoWebamax.com and fill out a brief confidential form to see how we can help. Remember, if you aren't paying attention to your online reputation, someone else is. GoWebamax.com Summer concerts, pool parties, chill nights under the stars. We're stocking up our closet so you're ready to look your best for all of it. At Plato's Closet in West Ashley and North Charleston, we're buying all things summer. So bring in your tees, tote bags, sandals, sunglasses, and more. We pay cash on the spot for gently loved name brand looks. Plato's Closet is the go-to destination for trend-forward teens and young adults who support local and shop sustainable. Visit Plato's Closet today. Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on River. Avenue. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day a little. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. BGW group. Void were prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Hello and welcome to Islanders Anxiety from Lighthouse Hockey and the Fans First Sports Network. My name is Dan Saracini. Joining me on this Sunday evening via Zencaster is my friend Michael Leboff. And Mike, we had no plans to record this week because we are on our summer schedule. But something wonderful happened on Saturday night and it's made the whole world seem a little bit more bright for us this uh, last couple of days. It was a beautiful day today. I was in New York City, in fact, seeing Figueroa with my, uh, my buddy Gio. And uh, I just felt a lot better about going into New York City because the Rangers season is over, having lost a 2-1 game six to the Florida Panthers on Saturday night. Uh, we can all breathe easily. I know you uh, are finally, you know, can, can rest easy. This has been a, a really traumatic playoff season for you. So how are you feeling now that the Rangers have finally been eliminated and the last of our enemies has finally been vanquished? Yeah, it's an, an indescribable relief, right? Like mm. the... Um... I first want to say, like, I do apologize. One, one, one thing I've learned over the years podcasting is um, you always have to treat every podcast like you always have to remember that there's going to likely be a couple new listeners mm. to everyone that don't know you or me or the inside jokes or the kind of just the general culture of the podcast, the, what, what we do. And I feel like the last couple I've been almost distracted just because it's hard for me to talk <laughs> about the Islanders off season right. when the Rangers are still playing, because I don't know how I would feel about the Islanders next season, like mm. how excited I could be about it or anything. If the unthinkable happened, like I, it, I just don't know. So it's hard for me to even get there. So I do my best, but I do apologize if, if I was a passenger uh, for those <laughs> podcasts, but now I'm, those I'm done. I've, I've had my, 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 uh, my moment, my, I got healthy scratch, basically but that, uh, <laughs> that kick in the ass because the Rangers are out. It's so nice. Um, it, it, so much gets bubbled up during these playoff runs. Mm. And this one was especially long and especially terrifying because of the path that was laid out before us with, with the Capitals being the worst playoff team we've seen in probably the salary <laughs> cap era. Then the hurricanes, we knew we, everybody watching that series against the Islanders is like, this team is a joke. Like right. they, they, classic, uh, classic hurricane stuff. That yeah, you'll you'll beat us, but because, but just wait, and mm. that happened, and uh, we get to the Panthers. The Rangers go down, uh, go ahead two one, and yeah, I was I was not okay. Um, and when I when I went to high school, the final exam in every 
uh, in every subject was worth 50% of your final grade. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> three hour, three hour final exam, 50% of your final grade. Um, and there were a few subjects that I, that I was not very good at. I was, I was much more of like a schemer and a system beater when it came to mm. uh, school, especially in high school, than a, like a good student. I just knew how to get through it. Um, you know, played my cards. Right. And <laughs> that's, that's all well and good at sub subjects, but like when it comes to like math or language right. or science, like you need to mm know your stuff right uh so there was a lot of times where it was 50 50 if if i was gonna pass uh my my classes and uh i would need to i would basically need to pass the final mm. if i passed the final i would pass the class mm. so while all my friends who had better grades in these classes were you know the finals exams were, were no big deal to them but to me it wasn't and, and i couldn't look forward to summer mm. until i got through until i got through that day after you 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 took the finals, then there was a day off, um, and then the next day after your last final, uh, the day after that, and after your last final, they would start calling you to to, to let you know if you failed and had to come to summer school. And You're wrecking, yeah. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. but when I when you don't get that call, the relief just hits you, and summer right. starts, and you don't have to worry about it for a long school for like this exact feeling for a whole year. And that's yeah. how I feel right now, right? Like. The whole summer's ahead of us. I can fire up Cap Friendly. <laughs> I'm starting to think about other things. It it does feel like a summer vacation, uh, and and this this one feels especially um, rewarding mm. because we have been pointing out all season long, like that this Ranger team was catching break after break after break after break, mm. not just on the ice. The way that they were built off the ice. Um, the 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 credit they they were getting was just basically uh, giving credit to you know what did you say U.S. Steel once yeah you yeah were talking about how, like yeah. for U.S. Steel yeah right, exactly <laughs> it's like like oh man like look at this break that they're catching like right wow the good good for the Rangers how exciting like yeah of course right. they're exciting because all these good players fall into their laps through one right. era, how, way or another they also have a ton of money they play in New York all this stuff mm. um Matt yeah. like and finally when they get to the Panthers and are getting outplayed and people realize, Oh man, the Rangers just have a horseshoe stuck up their ass. Like this is, <laughs> this is terrible. Like I can't yeah. believe they're just going to magic their way to a Stanley cup final. We're like, we've been trying to ring this alarm bell for so long and it's been mm. tortured. It's keeping me up at night. Um, and then all that was gone. That weight was just completely lifted off our shoulders. Thanks to Vladimir Tarasenko mm. second goal of all people. Um, yeah. So it's, <laughs> it is a, a really good day to be an Islander fan, a really good day to be an Islander fan every day, every year mm. when this comes around and as petty and petulant uh, as that sounds, it it's part of being a fan, right? It's yeah. like you, you hate you. There are teams that you're going to hate. There are teams that you're going to wish ill upon. Mm. This one is always number one on the list. And uh, man, mm. uh, it was to come that close to the abyss, right? You were staring right. at it and yeah. to now realize that we're, we're safe. Yeah. That it, it comes close to a lot of really good feelings in sports. Yeah. Well, like you said, it, this year in particular, like had they lost in the first round, we wouldn't have felt this way, but it's, right, just, yeah. it's building up and building up until you're like, Oh my God, come on. Don't, you know, every time they go to overtime, it's like, Oh, come on. I, I can't do this again. And then the Panthers, it, you, you mentioned last time that you were making it a point to like root for the Panthers rather than against the Rangers. So it worked out for you this time that the team that you were rooting for actually came through. And uh, and played, you know, I, I'm saying this as if I watched a nanosecond of this series, which, of course, I did not. You guys know me better than that. I would not have done that. But uh, we're going to get into all of this uh, in the second half of this episode. Uh, we're going to debut uh, a new form of what's become our staple thing this season. It is not Master Leaf Theater and it is not Master Pens Theater. It is Ranger Peace Theater, and we'll get into that in the second half. Uh, reminder that we are on Patreon at patreon.com slash Islanders Anxiety. You get ad-free episodes, bonus podcasts, and a whole lot more. So sign up today. All through summer, we're going to be doing uh, all kinds of stuff. Uh, but before we get to our Ranger Peace Theater, we do have some Islander stuff to talk about. So we're not total haters, but we will let the hater aid flow uh, in a little bit. Let's talk about some Islander stuff first. Specifically, uh, a bit of upheaval in the goaltending department uh, or goaltending, uh, you know, I guess supervision department, however you want to call it, uh, with a couple of moves that were announced last week. So. 
First and foremost was that Mitch Korn is no longer the director of goaltending for the team. He's left. Uh, I guess his contract was up probably. And he's gone back to Nashville to join uh, Barry Trotz and where they were paired together for so long. That left an opening uh, for director of goaltending, and that has been now filled by Chris Terreri, who was Bridgeport's goaltending coach, and he's been elevated to director of goaltending, uh, overseeing you know the entire organization, and that left a goal a spot for a goaltending coach for Bridgeport, and the Islanders hired a gentleman named Sergei Nelmov. Uh, I guess it's Nelmov. I'm gonna hope I'm, that I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, if you've never heard of this guy, that's okay. Uh, he is Lithuanian, and he has been for several or was for several years with CSKA. Uh, Ilya Sorokin's personal goaltending coach. So now he is part of the organization, specifically as Bridgeport Islanders goaltending coach. Uh, but I'm sure he's gonna be working with Ilya. Uh, quite a bit. So I want to take this backwards, starting with Naumov's uh, and talk about him coming here. Listen, no, we're not goalie experts. We're really not experts on much of anything, aside from hating the Rangers, which again, we'll get to uh, in plenty of time. But uh, I thought this was interesting. And, and it reminded me, if you're, if you're very, very old, you may remember this because I, I covered this, you know, when I was a, a, an intern for the Islanders and writing for their game time program. Uh, there was a time when the Islanders hired a guy named Stefan Lunar uh, as their goalie coach, who was Tommy Sallow's goalie coach from Sweden. And uh turns out, of course, uh history tells us that uh Tommy's <laughs> goaltending coach wasn't the problem back then. It was that the team <laughs> played no defense, but that's another story for another time. So this reminded me a little bit of that. And I don't see this as a bad thing. Again, we're not experts. We don't know this guy from a hole in the wall. Uh, if it makes Ilya feel better, that's great. But like, th- this is the kind of thing I feel like probably should have been done a year or so ago, but obviously Piero Greco is still the team's goaltending coach. He does a fantastic job. We're going to talk about him again in a few minutes when we talk about Mitch Korn. But uh, what did you think when you saw that uh, the Islanders had hired uh, Ilya Sorokin's sort of C-Scott goaltending coach uh, and brought and bringing him over starting next season? Yeah, I like you. I don't I don't know the technical implications here at all, but I feel like it's it's nice, right? It's like a nice gesture. So. Yeah, yeah, right. Like it's just like a nice thing to do to the to Sorokin if it helps him settle down and and sure. um, you know bounce back from. Uh, you know, tough second half of the season. Great. And it's, it's another one of these funny little moves that the Islanders have made, uh, like once a week, um, this off season, uh, when you, when you kind of extrapolate it out, prorate it from this one mm. season ended, uh, between the, the little draft pick trade, the Siplikov, um, mm. signing right. the, uh, corn out this guy in like the Islanders. It does seem like the Islanders are just like tinkering right now ahead of setting themselves up for a different uh like just a different look overall uh in 2024 2025 so it it does feel like it's there's like a couple things happening like smoldering um and and there are some i was listening to boomer gordon on nhl radio and he this isn't something he would normally talk about but he was talking about the the uh one of the great things that i like about his show is like he he does have a pretty good grasp of like all 32 teams Mm -hmm. and 32 fan bases and and can kind of touch on them all. And uh, he was just talking about how this stuff just kind of doesn't happen with Mm. Lou or the Islanders, right? Even, even if it's something as small as uh, Sergei Namov's coming over here, Chris Terreri getting kicked upstairs, corn going to Nashville, some, this draft pick trade, like Mm. these kind of things just don't haven't seemed to happen under the Lamarillo regime so now that they are it does feel like a little bit of a different summer coming our way um yeah and but i mean i i don't see the downside here it does kind of <laughs> stop all the people who are like oh what if they trade sorokin for marner uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah sorokin and sergey namovs yeah get traded right i think exactly. now it's uh right. but and and look i i i know that he's latvian but i love that we're getting more uh uh, we're, we're getting more Russian by the second here. It's a, it's true. You know, it, it's it's true. so funny that this and yeah. and you, you people have this funny thing about Lou where uh, guys like him, you know, hockey men uh, mm. are, are typecast into not liking the enigma, enigmatic Russian stereotype, mm. right? They they want their they want their farm boys from from Manitoba and Saskatchewan mm. and and not not the the dipsy doodlers from right. from Russia. Whereas, like, that's the polar opposite with Lamarillo, who basically oh, yeah. opened up the the, the walls, uh, right. you know, tore down the wall. 
I was gonna say yeah. he was like flying dudes in, yeah, you know, under the radar over the uh, the Berlin Wall, you know. So yeah, yeah, exactly. So like he it. he's you know, and, and you look at his Devils teams, they always like he he always had players, but uh, with like Russian influence. So I, I love that that they're they're going uh in this direction. So mm. um yeah, I uh I I think it's like another funny step towards something bigger that's to come. That's my prediction here. It's just mm. like these are. The Islanders are uh, setting themselves up for something bigger, even mm. if it has nothing to do with Ser- Sergei Namovs, obviously. <laughs> but it just—it feels like they are moving towards something. Yeah. Oh no, definitely. Else. Yeah. I mean, again, they've made a flurry of moves, and the season isn't even over yet. You know, we still haven't—we still don't know who's in the Stanley Cup final yet. So that is interesting, uh, and it is different than the way they've operated in the last couple of years. Uh, you know, under Lamorello. But yeah, I thought the Namovs thing was interesting, as I thought the Terreri thing was interesting, because A, I didn't know that Chris Terreri was Bridgeport's goalie coach. Raise your hand if you did. I didn't know if this was common knowledge, and I just had forgotten about it. But uh, I thought it was interesting that he's now the the de- director of goaltending development and scouting for the entire franchise. And uh, again, I don't, I don't know anything about goaltending. I know even less about being a director of goaltending development and scouting. All I know is that Chris Terreri was an NHL goalie and a Weird Islander, who we talked about on an episode of Weird Islanders uh, a little while back. And uh, has uh, if he runs the goaltending development and scouting the way he ran several uh, Dunkin' Donuts franchises in the Rhode Island area, I think we'll be okay. Because as a player, he was he was very early in on that sort of thing, and uh, I think he did pretty well for himself. So. I think they'll be okay. I, I don't have much to say about this. I don't know if you do either, but, uh, you know, I, I think it, it'll be interesting to see if there's a change in this. I think, you know, the Islanders have had, we talk about the, the roster, the NHL roster being, you know, it changes, but the core is still there. You can kind of say that for the goalies for a little while. Obviously, Marcus Hogberg is now in, in the fold. We talked about him a couple episodes ago. Uh, it does not look like Jacob Skarrick will be back. He's been pretty lousy in the minors. Uh, Henrik Tikkanen took a step forward last year uh, and got some time in Bridgeport and looked pretty good doing it. Uh, he spent uh, probably half the time in the ECHL playing for Worcester. Uh, so there's probably going to be a couple of spots there, you know, to find some things, but uh, they're pretty set in the NHL, but obviously they're always going to need a third stringer. And we saw a little bit of that this year. They had to call up uh Skarrick and sat on the bench for a couple of games. So, it will be interesting if there is a change in this. Maybe they start scouting different goalies. Maybe they draft a goalie or two here. Please don't <laughs> in the early rounds. Make them late round picks if you have to do it at all. But uh, I wonder if this is going to be any different going forward. Um, I don't know. What, what did you think when you when you saw this again? I, again, I fully admit that I had no idea Chris Terrier was even working for the Bridgeport Islanders. So that's me. Uh, uh, that's on me. I, <laughs> I just remember I, I knew that he was like somehow involved, but I didn't know if he was one of those just like random consultants mm, or mm. something. The Jacques um, Lemaire position, basically. yeah, 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 and and you know it's great that he's, you know these these weird he's a great weird Islander, Chris Turner, yeah. right? Like it's it's uh, between him and um, Corey Schneider, <laughs> the Islanders <laughs> love to just get get themselves those long time devils at the tail end, and right, um, yeah, he's I mean he's part of the Lamarillo Mafia, I guess, right? Yep. Like he's been oh, around, sure. he's from Providence with Lou and Jersey, and I'm I'm expecting it, it's almost like a like a a signal to to um i don't know fans or the team or whoever would be paying attention to this stuff and devoting any time to it that the goaltending we needs um needs to be a little bit better as good as it was last year i mean people forget that sorokin was had a really good first half yes. considering his workload and barlamov was incredible the second half and um you know it's a i think it it just shows that the team isn't they're going to try to fix it and, and of course part of it is corn is leaving so mm. things get moved around because of that and uh i don't know there's and you know what's great too is there's no ill will i feel like from anyone to to mitch corn and not like there no. should be to a goaltending coach right no. like not, when a goaltending coach leaves it leaves a team i don't think anyone's like oh my god throwing snakes at him <laughs> uh, but I, I do feel like islander fans have this uh you know an affinity to like that entire coach coaching regime and in I feel like even Lambert, right? Like we, Lane was not up to snuff as a head coach uh, mm. last year. We all know that, and uh, it was very frustrating. But uh, at the same time, we we were really worried about losing him um, as an assistant coach when right. uh, he was interviewing for like the Ducks job or whatever. So it's I just don't think 
there's ever going to be any ill will towards Barry Trotz's, uh, the Trotz Mafia or the <laughs> Lamarillo Mafia. It's like, almost like one of those classic scenes in a, uh, in a movie where like two, two organizations have to work together and, um, to like solve one, one problem. And then they go there their mm. own ways afterwards but uh yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, i i don't know i think it's just you know it's funny to to see these changes are are starting and it's like these little things first before mm. before the big ones and uh i wonder you know chris chris terrary uh i would love to get, get his thoughts on his islander tenure at some point <laughs> when, in his playing days uh i'm sure that they're not much uh yes. again they did not last very long but uh but no i'm glad you mentioned corn because i did want to end on him uh i definitely don't think there's any ill will at all and uh you know for me for my part when i saw that uh he had he had been moving on to nashville the first person i saw it from was our friend alex doherty again who was also on weird islanders who covers the uh the predators and uh it, it, to me, it seemed like kind of an inevitable piece of, of information. You know, he was going to move on at some point. Obviously, Barry is back in charge of Nashville. It does not surprise us that, that Mitch Korn went back there where he's worked with Barry for God only knows how long. And, uh, you know, my, my thing was that this was a guy who I think helped establish the Islanders as a real team. We talk about this was Lamorello's edict when he was hired here to set the franchise up as an NHL franchise is supposed to be run after years of basically being run on a shoestring with, with Garth Snow and Charles Wong and Lamorello is the kind of guy who knows how that works. He, without him, it's arguable that the Islanders don't get Barry Trotz. No offense to Garth Snow, but if Garth Snow is calling to hire Barry Trotz, I don't know if the answer is exactly the same as it was when Lou Lamorello called Barry Trotz to come coach the Islanders. So uh, those two guys helped establish the Islanders as a, as a real team and and a player again in the NHL. And Mitch Korn is definitely a part of that. Yes, it's true. Piero Greco is the hands-on goalie coach and has been for this entire time. And he does a terrific job. So I'm not taking anything away from this guy. I know there was some, some people, you know, it's always hard on Twitter. I don't even know why we're even still talking about Twitter the way we talk about it. But like, you know, somebody says something and then somebody else is like, ah, oh, you guys are making too big a deal out of this. And then the whole thing becomes a big mishmash of, well, nobody knows who's saying anything at all, but I'm not saying anything about Piero Greco here. I'm just saying that, Mitch Korn was a guy who came in with an enormous reputation. He had worked with Dominic Hasek. He had worked in years with Pecorine, obviously, in Nashville. He worked with Braden Holtby, who won a cup uh, with the Caps and was, you know, one of the better goalies in the league for a while there. This was a guy who, along with Trotz and Lamorello, helped lend the Islanders a sheen of credibility that they had not had in many, many years. And I don't know what this guy did on a daily basis. I don't even know how many times he even came to Long Island to talk to these guys. It doesn't matter. Having Mitch Korn on the team's, you know, uh, business directory or, you know, man leadership directory or whatever it was, is a huge, was a huge get. And what they did under him, what were, they, what were they, like second in the league in shutouts? They, you know, won a Jennings yep. trophy. They had two guys end up as like, uh, you know, Vezina trophy finalists. Uh, I think Sorokin and, and Varlamov came in second for the Jennings last year or two years ago. That is a run of success that this team has not had ever frankly you know billy smith as great as he was was never really a great regular season goalie and chico rush is the guy who has most of those records and and billy you know saved his best for the playoffs so like this is an unprecedented run of success that happened on with mitch corn at the head of the gate at the table so i mean we can't take that away from him again regardless of what he did or didn't do he gave this team a, a, a huge huge jolt in terms of credibility and I think he should be lauded for that. And I have no ill will if he's going to go. Like, again, this is Buddy who's running another team. It's, I assume his contract was up again. I don't think he was, like, fired or anything. So I wish him well. And, and I thank him for his service. And I think he's done, you know, great things in his career. I'm actually kind of surprised he didn't retire. But he's, I guess he's uh, still feels like he's got something left in the tank. And that's it. That's my spiel on, on Mitch Korn, who, uh, you know, I don't think his efforts and his uh, position here should be lost. Um, I don't know. Anything else to say about the departure of Mitch Korn, uh, you know, as always, we wish Barry nothing but the best in games unless they're playing the island. So in which case we really need them to, to lose, <laughs> which yep. doesn't happen too often. But if he's going to go to Nashville and help, uh, you know, make that team a success, hey, more power to them. I think that's that's great. And we'll be rooting for them. Yeah, no, I think that's it. It's uh, it is funny now that the it's Korn's gone. Lambert's gone. Yeah. Uh, you know, Jim Hiller, John Gruden. <laughs> Trot. So it's basically right. everybody's now gone. Right. It, yeah, I don't. I can't. I mean, I know Piero Greco worked with him, but I think that's really uh, the only staffer. I mean, unless I'm missing some like video coaches or mm -hmm. whatever that are 
uh, from the Trots era. So it's it's Patrick Wah. Mm. Yeah, he's got the keys. He's got the keys, and mm. um, you know, I, I uh, we're gonna talk Rangers. I know um shortly, but one one thing I I've been because I've been trying not to think about the Islanders um, <laughs> while this was all going on is uh yeah i haven't really thought much about how funny it is that patrick was the islanders head coach so <laughs> I'm, I'm back to like remembering I, i'm almost like it's not that i forgot it but it's just like mm. yeah it like normalized for a second and now that right the the the, the offseason can truly begin another successful season mm. for the new york islanders has ended <laughs> i can uh i can start to laugh about how patrick was is going to be mm. uh on long island and maybe he is right now but he'll be <laughs> one of the guys coming back for for a training camp in yeah. in a few months well, it's funny when you talked about the sort of Russianfication of the Islanders this summer. I thought I was going to say that, like for a minute there, it looked like we were going to get a uh, a bit of a uh, Quebecois revolution yeah. happening here. You know, we had Wa and then uh, Benoit De Roger joined, yes. and I was like, oh yeah, bring on the Frenchies, let's go. Um, this is a new you know type of Islanders here. Yeah. It is. It is like a. It is a funny diversification going on, right? Like mm. I feel like for a while the Islanders were very they were very Minnesota and Canadian, oh yeah for sure right yeah. like we had Definitely. we had. Um, the goalies were whatever, right. uh, always right. It was either like you know, we had Halak who was Slovakian and mm. Grice German, sure, uh, yeah. Leonard Swedish, Swedish yeah, and then yeah. the Russians came in. But um, I feel like it was very much this this team was very um, yeah. Minnesota and Toronto. That's, yeah, those are yeah, the, exactly. Two groups, yeah, yeah. And then and then with spring, you'd sprinkle in like one or two randos yeah. from from other places, and then they started to get a little Swedish mm. with, with Aho. And then Holmstrom, and then Angval, mm. and then and, I mean even like Robin Sallow when he was popping up, right. and then all of a sudden they start to get a little Russian again, mm. and now like we have a whole we have a bunch of contingents. We have uh, the <laughs> the we still have those those um, you know Northeast Canadians, the Minnesota mm. boys uh, who who got uh, add they added one with Mike Riley. We'll see if he's back, but mm. um, and then uh, now, but now we have this. We got some Swedes. Yeah. We got we got a Swedish table in the cafeteria. We got a Russian table in the cafeteria. Um, we got the 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 Quebecois coaches and mm. um, yeah, it's uh, funny funny that this kind of happens slowly, but uh, <laughs> it's nice. It's fun. Uh, yeah, yeah. They're becoming a bit of a UN, which is kind of yes. nice to see. Which is again a, a different UN. look. Yeah. So we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, last thing before we take a break, real quick uh, about another Minnesota-born Islander is Andrews Lee. Congrats to him on winning the King Clancy trophy uh, for his uh, charitable works in the community. Uh, it's about damn time. Cause I'm pretty sure that Anders has been the team's nominee for the King Clancy for about five or six years in a row uh, with his jam cancer uh, uh, charity and, and all the works he's done in the name of his friend Finov. And uh, I just, I just love the guy. We've talked about this many times. You can criticize Lee for whatever he does on the ice and that's all fair. But as a, as a human being, this guy is, is beyond, parallel like he's just such a good dude and, and does, he works tirelessly in the community and the king clancy is no joke like this is a real award that that goes to people who do i mean most most big time athletes do do some sort of charitable works with different groups but you know very few of them put it uh, for up close and, and front and center like that and uh lee is one of those guys so congrats to him i believe he's the second islander to win the king clancy uh after doug wait who won it when he was a player. So there you go. Uh, and uh, I just, that, that just made me feel really good for, for Lee. And again, you know, he, he, he takes a lot of abuse from the fan base. And again, a lot of it's justified, you know, he's the captain, he's making a ton of dough and he needs to start putting the puck in the net a little bit more than he has been over the last couple of years, but you really can't argue with this dude as a human being. And, uh, and that's pretty yeah. cool. So please, please, Anders, do not make me eat those words, please. I'm yeah. Peggy. <laughs> But so far, so far, this guy's been great, uh, and I, I hope he continues. And and the King Clancy again is a big deal. We don't talk about it that much. Don't make a big deal about it. It's like the Lady Bing. It's one of my favorites. Everybody shits on it all the time. But if I'm going to win an award, and it's the same award that Mike Bossy won, I'll take it. You know, so <laughs> King Clancy's kind of a big deal for me. I like that one too. So yeah, uh, yeah. And <laughs> it, it. it's like it's like it's funny. And and once again, well, maybe I'll, this is jumping the gun on the Rangers stuff, but <laughs> a, a week before. Um, or a little bit before that, the Mark Messier Leadership Award. Yes, was given thank out you. <laughs> to, to to Jacob Truba, hmm. um, who who uh, you know, talk about a growing Islanders legend. Jacob Truba <laughs> is man. He is he is playing. He is playing for whoever's playing against the Rangers. Jacob Truba is playing for them that night. It's great, right? Um, and he's throwing his elbow into people's chins and uh, 
not getting in trouble for it. Yeah, uh, that was or trying that was to and taking trying to. Position he, yeah, now and, he's yeah. just missing. He's, he's he's lost the step, so he's now just missing, and right. people see it coming. Um, and Ranger fans have to do this weird dance where they defend him, mm. but at the same time, they know deep down they want him to get suspended because it right. would help their chances if he's not in the lineup. Um, but yeah, you know that that award gets given out by Mark Messier. He just he is the person who gives out that award. Right, and then the King Clancy is one that's given out in like a legitimate process, almost democratic. And I thought yeah. it was, it was really a fun juxtaposition now that the Rangers are out. And then when the Stanley cup to see this, like if mm. had, had that ha- not happened and, and bad stuff went and, and the bad thing happened, it would, I wouldn't even be talking about this right now, but mm. um, since we, we the reality is that the Rangers are now 31 years without a cup and don't have to worry about that. It's, it is a beautifully, poignant juxtaposition here which is uh, and it says a lot about the two franchises that Mm. this award given out by a ranger to a ranger and then the other one given to an islander and it's just (laughs) it's the 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 two guys like i i don't know much i know people think jacob true was a good guy i don't know anything but it's just so funny that they 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 happened like a week after one another Mm. and there's all this vitriol thrown at tr- the Truba award because of the way he plays and how it's like a sham and how could this guy win that award and, mm. and then Lee wins and you just don't even hear a peep about it. It's just the, it's great. And, and yeah. it's uh yeah, it's another style over sub substance or substance over style situation. I think where, uh, you know, the Islander guy gets it. It's just a nice little nod. It's good for him. You know, yeah. great guy, et cetera. Everyone moves on with their day yeah. kind of thing. But um, yeah, I mean, Beautifully, beautiful, beautiful juxtaposition from the hockey gods there. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, the, you know, the, the Mark Messier thing has been kind of a, a punchline for a long time, but giving it to Jacob Truba might be the final nail in its coffin. Like, it's just, you yes, know, oh, wow, really? You have really searched high and low for this one, didn't you, Mark? Yeah. <laughs> but that is a perfect segue. So we're going to take a break and we are going to come back and we're going to debut Ranger Peace Theater. And trust me when I tell you, you are going to enjoy this because we have some real humdingers picked out here and uh we're gonna have a good time uh doing some dramatic readings of articles about the rangers demise uh that has made us all feel very good so come on meet us on the other side thanks and now a word from our sponsors first is vintageicehockey.com where you can get t-shirts hoodies jerseys mugs and more featuring over 100 classic hockey logos vintage ice hockey also carries our al arbor and the island merch and our portion of the sales always go directly to the Center for Dementia Research. Use the code ANXIETY20 to save 20% off an order of two items. That is VintageIceHockey.com. Try wines from the Pinot Project. They offer a rosé, a Pinot Grigio, and a Pinot Noir that was named a 2022 Top 100 Best Buy by Wine Enthusiast Magazine. All are delicious, priced at less than $15 a bottle, and available at local wine shops and at UBS Arena. Learn more at thepinoproject.com. Please drink responsibly. I'm Victoria Cash. Thanks for calling the Lucky Land Hotline. If you feel like you do the same thing every day, press 1. If you're ready to have some serious fun for the chance to redeem some serious prizes, press 2. We heard you loud and clear. So go to LuckyLandslots.com right now and play over 100 social casino-style games for free. Get lucky today at LuckyLandslots.com. Available to players in the U.S., excluding Washington and Michigan. No purchase necessary. VGW Group. Void prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. So, the New York Rangers have been eliminated. Uh, again, as a 2-1, as of a 2-1 loss to the Panthers on Saturday. Panthers go on to the second straight Stanley Cup final uh, for them, third overall in team history. Maybe they can win two games this time. We'll see what happens. But uh, we are going to obviously be rooting for the Panthers because Kyle Poso is on the team and he's making the Cup final for the first time uh, and we're, we're pulling for him, obviously. But the number one thing we need to discuss is the Rangers being eliminated. And what better way to investigate this than with a new bit uh, that is a play on a bit that we started this year and we cannot be more excited to present to you the first ever edition of Ranger Peace Theater. (music) 
Yes. In case you guys haven't figured it out by now, each one of these has its own theme song <laughs> because you have to you have to make the you have to set the tone, right? So uh, Master Leaf Theater has its own song, and Master Pen's Theater had its own song, and now Ranger Peace Theater has its own song. Uh, so uh, the Rangers were a very uh, good team this year. They won the President's Trophy. They led the league with, I believe, 114 points, and uh, that didn't mean a hill of beans really in the conference final against the Panthers because they were generally outplayed. And if it wasn't for the efforts of their goalie, Igor Shesterkin, uh, they definitely would not have made it to game six <laughs> or probably would have barely made it to game four. Uh, the two previous seeding rounds for them were about as different as you can get. They play the Washington Capitals, who Mike mentioned before, were lucky to be in the playoffs at all and were maybe one of the worst, if not the worst team to ever make the playoffs. And then the Carolina Hurricanes who do the same thing every year where they, they beat the Islanders. They look like a juggernaut. And then when they play a real team, things fall apart. Uh, before we get into this first piece here, I do need to say one thing real quick. This is sort of like a disclaimer, sort of like in the beginning of every episode of Impractical Jokers, they do this whole disclaimer thing. So here's the only thing I'm going to say. If you are a Rangers fan, and maybe you're listening to this because your Islanders fan friend said, hey, dude, you should listen to this. It's actually funny. I know you're hurting, but you should listen to this. These guys are really funny about this. I, I want, and, and, you're, and you're listening to this and you're thinking, this is the most petty, pathetic loser behavior I've ever <laughs> heard on a podcast. I am here to tell you that you are 100% correct. This is very <laughs> petty, pathetic loser behavior. But it's what we, it's what we uh, specialize in. This, 100%. That exact this is what behavior. we do. Right. Eight years we've been doing this. Right. So but here's the thing. If you think that your team is somehow above this sort of reaction because you're the president's trophy winner, because you've rebuilt the right way after <laughs> bottoming out and because you're a marquee team that is going to help grow the game by having the NHL be, you know, a, a front facing sport in a big city like this. I'm here to tell you that that kind of thinking is exactly why we hate you and why we want to be petty and, uh, you know, persnickety about this because your team is no real better than anybody else and we're about to ex uh, examine why so first piece here in our first ever edition of ranger peace theater is by dan rosen of the nhl.com and uh i'm actually going to read the first two lines and we'll discuss and then i will jump to the the last couple of lines so this is this might be my favorite lead in, in any one of these bits that we've done so far this is absolutely brilliant so here we go this is Dan Rosen at NHL.com, and the title is very simple. Rangers eliminated with another one-goal loss in Game 6. And he writes, <clears throat> Dateline, Sunrise, Florida. The New York Rangers finally ran into a team they could not solve. Worse yet, the Florida Panthers stole their resolve. Okay, first of all, bonus points for a rhyming couplet. Like we haven't seen any rhymes here this time, so that's pretty good. Second of all, what? Like what are we talking <laughs> It couldn't solve. How hard was it to solve the Capitals and Hurricanes? Couldn't have been that hard. <laughs> the Rangers didn't, didn't, didn't do it. It didn't take them that long, right? Uh, Am I crazy? Is, no. is this you know, <laughs> kind of giving them a little, a little too much credit here, dude, right? That... <sighs> it, no, it's great. It's, it, and this is part of the in, – in, in two sentences or whatever it is. Right. Um, yeah, and, and basically a tweet. He, <laughs> he kind of, Dan just kind of sums up the entire um, soul of of this bit here, which right. is that that in in so little words he says like the, uh, the Rangers they went down swinging. The every every little it wasn't about the um it wasn't their fault almost right. They just mm. they ran into a team that was good. Yeah. <laughs> Could you believe that? Right. Could you believe that the Rangers ran into a good team in the playoffs? And and this goes back to a couple of things that were tweeted um, before the series, which was that the Rangers, I can't remember who it was. It might've been Larry Brooks or someone at the post. I think it was Larry Brooks tweeted out that the Rangers were going to have to be the only team in the playoffs to have to go through two 110 point teams to get mm. to the Stanley cup yes. final. And what he forgot to mention was that the Florida Panthers beat the Boston Bruins, who finished on 109 points, <laughs> a whole one point behind the 110 point benchmark. But the way that the tweet was structured, it was brilliant because it was like, man, we got to get behind these guys. They're climbing a mountain that no team has ever had to climb before by playing good teams in the playoffs. Right. Everyone else is playing really bad teams, except for the Rangers. It's rigged against them. 
we got to start reseeding. This playoff format is ridiculous. And 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 Larry yeah. Brooks was also mad that they were playing the Hurricanes in round two. Right. Actually, now that I think about it, which was hilarious because yeah, dude, it's the second round of the playoffs. You're gonna be playing a good team, like right. just because yeah. because you're the Rangers doesn't mean you get. Hey, man, you know what? It's not really fair that the, we're making the Rangers, the New York Rangers. You know, Tom Hanks is going to be in the crowd. <laughs> Keenan right. Thompson is going to be in the crowd. We know right. this because Luke Fox Jukebox gave up his his beat on the, uh, the right. Maple Leafs to, to go to the Eastern Conference Final. And his entire Twitter timeline was just pictures of the scoreboard at Madison Square Garden <laughs> letting us know that Matthew Broderick was in the building. Right. Yeah. And if these guys are in the building and they're the Rangers and they're the President's Trophy and they're playing at the Garden, um, it's just not fair that they, maybe we should just give them the Florida Everglades. You know, that the team that Josh Hosang's playing on, they should. That's who they should. They should play in right. round two. The Fort Wayne Comets, come on down, take yeah. on the Rangers, please, because we can't. The Hurricanes can go play someone else. Um, yeah, yeah. It's it, they. They uh, they finally ran into a team they couldn't solve. Yeah, yeah. That happens all the time in the playoffs. Yeah. That's what the playoffs are all about. And through my completely non-scientific research, I'm going to say that no fan base cries about reseeding more than the Rangers fans do. Like this is, I, this has been going on for years. I had a friend in college who was always like, they need to reseed. Why? Like, yeah. well, you know, it's not fair that they got to play good team. What are you talking about? Like, they're always going to play good. It's, a play- it's insane. Uh, but yeah, so I thought solving them and then uh, tying that with resolve is really great. Uh, you know, the, the Panthers stole their resolve, which basically their resolve this season was having Igor Shesterkin play goalie. Like that's what the Rangers resolve has been because they were mostly caved <laughs> in by the Panthers all series long. But uh, anyway, so that that's just the very beginning. It's the first two sentences. Like you said, that's a tweet's worth of incredible, incredible uh, emotion there from Dan Rosen. But the ending is almost as good. So you skip all the way down to the bottom and he writes, the Rangers are out of chances now. The harsh reality of finality was setting in as they were slowly and quietly showering, changing, and packing up to get out of here, to get home and into the off-season that is starting earlier than they thought or believed it would. 65 wins, 6 too few. Quote, it's a lot to process, Kreider said. Wow. (laughs) Powerful words. Very, very powerful. The harsh Uh... reality of uh their season coming to an end earlier than they thought i mean they made it to game six of the conference finals that that's pretty far uh (laughs) and 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 in fairness rosen does say like you know just because they didn't make it to the cup final doesn't mean that you you know take away all the great things that they did this season and that's fair but like i i don't know like whenever you talk about them showering and changing and stuff it's a little bit weird but it's just i I don't know well that's that's um that is straight out of the (laughs) That's straight Luke out of the Luke Fox Fox, playbook. Luke yeah. Fox playbook, playbook. And I mean, maybe Luke Dan Rosen in... was sitting next to him. In the exactly. Game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Hey, Dan, you know, I'm a big fan of your work, but I think there's one thing that you're missing here. It's, you know, the steam of a shower and, and <laughs> what, what, what cologne is Willie Styles wearing? Right. You know, that, that's, that's the kind of stuff that really right. elevates your, your, you got to get right. You, these... you got to scrub with these guys. You got to get <laughs> right off them. You got to get the sweat. <laughs> Wow, you're right. You're right. That's what I need to capture this. But anyway, yeah, it, it's a lot to process. Kreider yeah. says you're not. You're not kidding. It is a lot to process. This whole uh, article is a lot to process. Uh, so, yeah. But yeah, uh, but yeah, uh, this, this is a great one and a great way to start. And, yes. uh, and I love just... hearing from Chris Kreider in these situations. Yes. Um, it, it, what there's one thing that's very different about um the Rangers and the like Rangers Peace Theater versus Master Leaf Theater or <laughs> Master Penn's Theater or whatever else will come down the line is one thing that there's a few things that obviously set the Rangers and the fan base apart. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of them, and I, I always say this is that the rain, the, the na- every team in the national hockey league believes that they belong to the national hockey league. They are a part of a 32 team league. They're part of the history of the league. Like this, they're, they're not the, they're not the league. Mm. Um, and with the Rangers that, that, um, that POV, that point of view gets flipped. Where it's like the we we root for the Rangers, the league comes to us basically. Like we right. we yeah. will find out what a Columbus Blue Jacket is when the Columbus Blue Jacket visit visit <laughs> the Blue Jackets visit the the Madison Square Garden, right? Like mm. we we will not bother knowing that Chris Tanev broke his foot in the Western Conference Final, and that could have massive ramifications for us in mm. a couple of days. Um, 
until Chris Tanev shows up to Madison Square Garden. You have to come to us. Yeah. The, we won't. They won't ever come to you. And this, by the way, is the Yankees' mindset. This is the way the Yankees fans have operated for years. Like you're not going to know who the best pitcher on the Kansas City Royals is until he plays against the Yankees. There's yes, no reason yeah, to find it, out about this, right? <laughs> and it's and, and it's and it goes even beyond like the players on the ice too. It's just like the way the league works. Like, oh man, right. the there's the Vegas Golden Knights are winning Stanley Cups with LTIR. Uh, mm. Or the, I should, I should say the, the Blackhawks. And then all of a sudden, like the, the Lightning are doing it. And, and the Range, Ranger fans are like finding this stuff out like weeks and weeks later. <laughs> and like They start folk. I have so many Ranger fans that are focusing on the goal. They hate the Golden Knights because like they're loopholing their way to a Stanley Cup. And they find out like, wait, they cheated when they did it. Like, that's not right. Like, why aren't we allowed to do it? Like, this is we can't just put Jacob Truba's eight million dollars cap hit on uh, on LTIR for for the, the regular season. That's not fair. Like we're getting boned here. Whereas <laughs> in reality, like, no, you're not You're This is the rest of the league is also dealing with this problem. This is not a Ranger specific thing. This is, this has something to do with you, but the flip side of all of this is, yeah, but you're still the Rangers. You're, you get there. You might not get the, uh, the LTIR pool, you know, loophole this season with the, right. the, the Knights have, or the, the state tax stuff or whatever. But you're the Rangers. You get the, all the other stuff. You get you're the richest team in the league. You're the most valuable team in the league. You play at Madison Square Garden. Mm. Uh, you you get whatever free agent you want. If you want to make an offer to them, they'll be interested. You <laughs> get the Adam Fox stuff, frozen ping pong balls, your goalies <laughs> falling into your lap, all this stuff. And and none of that is ever mentioned. It's just no. Oh man, like this isn't fair. Like we're getting we're we're getting the the raw end of this deal here because this team that has no impact on us is is pulling away. But <laughs> uh, yeah, I digress. And, and, yeah. it, but, Oh, but my point was like, so you, I, I, ra- I rarely take in Rangers content at mm. all because, right. because of this viewpoint, right? Like it's, um, you know, Rangers out uh, rather mm. than, you know, the Rangers being a part of the league. So mm. I don't, I don't know any Rangers podcasts. I don't like, like leaf stuff. I was listening. I was listening to uh, some leaf stuff in stop and shop today. <laughs> uh, walking around in my Islanders stuff. I, I took a very slow trip around the grocery store making sure I had uh, given, you know, you know, my Islander stuff because I could finally start wearing it again. And mm. I'm, I'm sure that there were some people in there that, that saw it and were like, God damn it. Like, you know, <laughs> but um, uh, I won't listen to the Rangers stuff until they are, get eliminated and you turn on the, like the MSG uh, post game show and seeing Chris Kreider, Mm. at the end of every year is, is brilliant because like the guy is just like he gives one word answers and mm. and that's just who he is and it's fun when the one word answers are you know it's, it's tough to process right now mm. that's you know chicken soup for the soul um <laughs> but the the rest of the broadcast the booth they're like sitting there and they're just like they're so shocked that this could yeah. happen right like that wait the rangers can be eliminated right in this season that's this magical season and but every year to them is a magic. It's a magical season every year. Yeah, like they just have this magic, and the they have the horseshoe. They have they are a very very wealthy team, and you can absolutely invent your own luck when you have that those kind of deep pockets. Mm. And just hearing them talk about this group being like, "What what are we missing? What can we go get?" Mm. As if there's no, um, there's no way that they can't get it. Like here's our wish list. And we'll obviously get all of it because yeah. we're the Rangers. That's how so it works. Just he- yeah, just how it works. So hearing hearing all of that after this this uh, this game ended was so good. I'm like, oh god, these guys are great. <laughs> they I, I was like, they're gonna start like mentioning maybe we go get Patrick Kane back and stuff like that. <laughs> like it's it's so good. Well, maybe uh, Drysital. You know his yeah. uh, his contract is up soon, and uh, yes. sure he wouldn't he love to to play in the bright lights of Broadway? Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, because that they can just do that. Yeah, there's a big difference between how how the end of this season is being handled for them and how the end of you know, the, uh, the two Islanders semifinal seasons were handled for them. But we'll get to that in a little bit. So I'm glad you brought up the TV angle of this because we have a couple of tweets here that disclose that talk about exactly that and, and discuss the way that the Rangers are kind of handled on TV. Uh, and you sent me one, so you can read this right away. And uh, these are from tweet. These are a couple of tweets. You're going to read one. I'm going to read one from guys that, are, are generally good level-headed folks. In fact, I've met one of them. He's a good dude. I'll talk about him in a second. Uh, but, you know, when your team gets this far in the playoffs, everybody's a fan. Like, there is no impartial. And we, we talk about this with the Leafs all the time. These guys pretend like they're sort of impartial journalists, but they're the biggest flag-bearing homers of all time, you know? 
And so everybody kind of gets to that point uh, in this. And, and, you know, this first one, I kind of want to think this guy was kidding, but I'm not sure. <laughs> so, uh, so why don't you, you read this first one yep. and, uh, and we'll talk about it. Yeah. So, um, and, and to like, to, to reiterate the point, like, um, I, I'll just read it and we'll, we'll get to it. Uh, this is from, uh, Nick Mercadante, uh, and, uh, Mercad on Twitter. And this was during the game five loss, I believe. Yeah. Bay 30. So game five quote. I think PK and Messier are great on the intermission analysis when PK is focused. That was a good segment. Get Hank over to ESPN, and I'd love that team. Man. You know what would make this rain, this this broadcast that already has Ranger fan Steve Levy as the ringleader and Mark Messier, Rangers legend, captain of the 1994 Stanley Cup winning team, just a little bit better? One right. more Ranger legend. Yeah. <laughs> At this to our point, like, I, are you guys watching these these things all year long? Like you, mm. I don't think so. Like because you yeah. maybe we're we're the losers that like will tune in to TNT or ESPN on a random t- Tuesday or Thursday night when the like the stars are playing the Ducks or something. And um, yeah, like I see these guys on the TV all all the, all the time. But it's like Ranger fans are thinking like. Huh. Mm. There's just not enough Rangers on this right. broadcast. There's only two. There's only, yeah. two. and then you throw in the fact that there's Linda Cohn, yeah, and and, and then Leah Hextall's dad right. or grandpa won the 1940 yeah. Stanley Cup with the Rangers. How about it's this, uh, Ryan did you, Callahan? Did you watch ESPN's original documentary, uh, Saving Sackick, about <laughs> how Joe Sackick almost signed with the Rangers in 1997? Well, if you missed it, that's okay because you can watch it on a double feature with. No easy victories. The <laughs> documentary about the 1994 Rangers Stanley Cup victory, soon to be produced by ESPN, narrated by Jeremy Schaap. I am 100% not making that up. This no. company has put out two documentaries in the Great. same year about the same team. You could argue that the second one was about the Avalanche, but let's be honest. It's really the Rangers are like the villains in the story, I guess. So I don't know. I don't care because I lived through that. But yes, the point is. <laughs> And you're missing one. You're missing one from ESPN. You're missing the, the miracle at the Meadowlands E60. Oh my about, God! About That's the, right. About the regular season win over the New York Islanders. How the, could it, I forget? And the third documentary. Now, of course, you know you, we only have so much time in a day. So mm-hmm. maybe whether it's just before you go to bed after watching those three produce ESPN produced right. uh, documentaries, you can then flip over to Netflix no. for the new Henrik Lundqvist documentary that has just been released. <sighs> So this is a four documentary season for the New York Rangers who don't get, as this segment of Master Rangers Theater will tell you, they just yeah. don't, they don't get a, a fair shake from the, right. from the broadcasters. The ESPN has it out for the Rangers. The league has it out for the right. Rangers. The entire yeah. hockey world has it out for this team that has only gotten four documentaries made about it this season. Yeah. Oh Unbelievable. God. Like it's crazy. I would, I, I yeah, it's yeah. so it's, it's, so Me- crazy. Meanwhile, Islanders fans are still watching Never Say Die, uh, an article, a, a documentary that came out about the Islanders in I think 1993. Right? Is that? Is yeah. it, I think it included the uh, the David Volek goal. Yeah. So we we've got a long time. Yes, it's been you know 40 years since we've won a Stanley Cup, but uh, we, it's been uh, 30 years since we've gotten a documentary about the Islanders. Yeah. There you go. Well, well, we, we, they had big shot, but that was about the Islanders. Almost. <laughs> be, yeah. That was about a fraud owner. Right. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, was, it's, 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 yeah, but really th- this is why, this is why this stuff drives everybody nuts. Like right. you, you, if you want to complain about the ESPN, like the technical aspects of the broadcast. Right. By all or, means, like, please do. Yeah, the, the audio <laughs> and the video aren't syncing up. Great. <laughs> but to, to say that this, like the, the one thing that this broadcast team is missing is mm. another Rangers legend is so out of the, out of this world. And I don't think that people real, like you don't, he's, Nobody realizes when they say something like that how mm. in- incredible it sounds to people like us who, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm who obsess over finding this stuff almost and like mm. being like, are you kidding me? Right. But um, th- then you you just read the roster. I remember the the Islanders played the Rangers. Uh, was I think it was that Saturday game? Um, mm. The Rangers ended up winning in a shootout, but it was a really good game by the yeah. Islanders and one I'm we really we keen. really enjoyed. And uh, I think that was the broadcast where it was. Uh, Messier and Levy in the studio, 
Yes. Um, Gucci Gross. Gucci Gross and Callahan in the play by play color. Leah Hextall in the, in the middle. So you had former, two former Ranger captains, (laughs) Steve Levy, who's a lifelong Ranger fan. And then, uh, 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 granddaughter of a new york ranger right. stanley cup winner all in the same broadcast booth plus you had to hear like linda Con- you know i think that mm. was the day they they started to like tease out the the no easy victories thing so yeah. here's linda Cohn, by the way and mm. uh she's a ranger fan and works for espn it's yeah. I, I say this a lot about the leafs that their team is covered um everybody starts the the season writing about this team as if they're writing the first chapter of a book that's going to end with the Maple Leafs winning the Stanley Cup at the right. end of the book. And then at the end of the, the season, when they lose in the first round, like they kind of just abruptly end it. They're like, Oh, by the way, this, <laughs> the, the season's over and uh, we, they're, they're going to trade one of the core four and then hmm. they don't. And then they start it over the book over again. ESPN broadcasted this entire NHL season hmm. as if it was going to culminate with the Rangers going to their the, to a Stanley Cup final and winning their first Stanley Cup since 1994 and the way we know this is because no easy victories about the 1994 Stanley Cup team which is now 30 years ago mm. that yeah. that documentary would have debuted the day after game 7 right. against the Florida Panthers yeah so they're thinking Steve Levy Linda Cohn they're mm. all in the they're all in the room like we we got to do this. We got to, we got to make this documentary. We got to make sure it lines up with this date. Well, Um, and they, they treat the 94 Stanley cup as if it matters to literally anybody else. Like there are now 32 teams in the league. What were there? 26, I think in 94, like this was prior to Nashville, Minnesota, Columbus, Atlanta slash Winnipeg. Now, like forget about the, you know, the even newer teams like this, cup which was significant to the rangers fans and uh, obviously means absolutely nothing to anybody else (laughs) nothing at all you know i mean if you're an oilers fan you're like hey have those guys played for us that may be it you know (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) but then the person the person wearing the paul korea anaheim ducks jersey like is like wait why is mark messier out walking around with the stanley cup during the broadcast of my game right now like who cares so you know this would be like the um the Chicago Bears, like if ESPN kept talking about the 85 Bears Super Bowl, like who cares? You know, like that was huge for the Bears. Don't get me wrong. But like the team they beat that year went on to win seven other Super Bowls. So who cares? <laughs> it means nothing, you know? So uh, I don't think, you know, no offense to uh, G.I. Joe legend, William the Refrigerator Perry. But like, really, we, we can get we can let it go. But yep. ESPN doesn't want to yeah. let it go. It's, it's crazy. Like, dude, yeah. no other sports I feel like no. have things like this like the, no. I, I was talking to my friends the other day about how when after the chicago cubs won that world series because he went to yeah. a long island ducks game that's an even and, better example yeah <laughs> and um the the cubs went uh the guy who made the final out for the cubs who pitched who was pitching for when the final out was made is now playing for the long island ducks mike montgomery mm. and we were saying you know what's so funny is that when the Cubs won the World Series, everyone was like, wow, these guys are never going to have to pay for a drink again in Chicago. We're going to remember mm. all of them. Like, they're they're set for life in Chicago. We're going to be talking about this team forever and ever and ever again. And this guy's playing for the Long Island Ducks because people move on. Right. Like, even even from, from a, a championship that had that much um, historical baggage to it, like, mm. people move on. They go pitch for the Long Island Ducks eight years later. Like, this isn't <laughs> – this is – but for in hockey and this one specific championship, we mm. get reminded every time we turn a corner that this team won a Stanley Cup in 1994 with Mark Messier, and he's just mm. always got the cup. Like the yeah. cup, it's almost like we got to bring it out. We got to bring. Mm. Um, hey man, we got right. You know, it's an ESPN broadcast of Minnesota Wild playing the Winnipeg Jets. I, <laughs> I think we got to get the cup out here because right. Matt Zuccarello plays for the Wild, and yeah. he was on the Rangers the last time yeah. that they went to the Stanley Cup, and we can, right. you know, tie that in. Also, it's uproariously funny that Mark Messier won five Stanley Cups playing for the Edmonton Oilers. So, yes. you know, <laughs> which you can't forget that. Right, right, yeah. right. If anything, the, yeah, the 90, yeah. 1990 was oh, probably and, the most impressive. <laughs> and, and to the whole point of this conversation is that these – fans think that the opposite is happening right which is crazy like that this 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 broadcast is poking fun at the rangers mm. that these guys they, right. they're needling ranger fans that they are yeah they are 
the, the, we are the the poor little orphan franchise that keeps getting kicked while we're down. Yeah. Like yeah. You you guys are watching Mark Messier on this broadcast. <laughs> and on the other on the other national rights holder, you're watching Henrik Lundqvist and Wayne Gretzky. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> what am I Nathan missing Carter. here? It's a Carter play yeah, for the Rangers Carter too. Carter played for the Rangers too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yep. sure. I'm sure yeah. that I'm, I'm sure that there's a Vancouver Canucks fan out there is thinking, right? Huh? Yeah. Man, where's where, where are the Sedines? Like, yeah. The, and Seriously. if and if yeah, it's it's crazy because I I mean it's I don't know what the the psychiatric or psychological term is for for mm-hmm. this situation, but there's something here where you're watching something, wishing, mm. um, you're wishing for. Or, or the exact thing that you are wishing for, you're now being, you're accusing this broadcast of doing to you. It's, <laughs> it's mind-boggling and it's so frustrating and it's part yeah. of the why we hate hated this team and the way that this team was covered all season long. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's yeah. it's too much. Yeah, uh, we have a similar tweet that I'll read, and uh, this is from Joe Fortunato who runs Blue Shirt Banter. I've met Joe; he's a terrific guy. He's usually a really smart tweeter. But to that end, what we've been talking about for now, he tweeted at one point, this was uh, during yesterday's game, he wrote, <clears throat> Oh, good. Trocek consoling a sobbing Shesterkin. Appreciate you showing that, ESPN. Dicks. Like, guy, you know, your team lost. Like, <laughs> they've been treated as if they already won the series all series long. I think it's okay. It's it's fair for them to show your your you know, one of your centers uh, consoling a <laughs> crying goalie. It just it, again, it, it's like I think we're watching two different things. But that though that tweet, the Nick tweet and the Joe tweet, they pale in comparison to this tweet that you sent, which is it's not a tweet. This is this is a book. Like this yeah. is not even this is a blog. This is beyond blog post. And, yeah, it's insane. And, and before before you get to it, I, I like here's the context here for. The entire postseason, my for you page on on Twitter started to just get inundated with Ranger stuff because Ugh, gross. you know I'm looking for lineup stuff and whatever yeah. and and I'm searching for uh you know whatever line rushes and and I mm. think my my algorithm was like oh this guy's interested in Ranger tweets so after games it would be you know littered with with Ranger stuff whether they won or lost and um I would find more of these crazy um tweets from with this ex- exact kind of um view of of the hockey world where it's that every mm. everybody against the rangers no quit in new york we're the resilient ones even though right. there's l- nothing resilient about a team that has the most money and um <laughs> can basically just get whatever player they want whenever they want and and all that like there's 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 very little underdog sc- story here like when the rangers be- were betting underdogs against the hurricanes and then the, the panthers they were all like oh my god this is an incredible underdog story that the mm. pan- president's trophy winners are are pulling these huge upsets against the 1980 soviet mm. union team uh so i would get all these tweets and they would just drive me up a wall and i just kept saying to myself that if they do lose and at the time i didn't think that they would and this would all be for none i'm like if they do lose there's going to be one that i'm just going to latch on to <laughs> and it's going to make everything be worth it. And this one is, I have no idea who this person is. I'm sure that, that they're lovely and great, whatever. But it is a really good standard bearer for what we're talking about tonight. Mm. And the, the complete missing the mark of how this franchise is in reality versus how they are in, in their fans' heads. Like how they're treated in reality versus how Ranger fans think that they're being treated, mm. which are two completely, <laughs> completely different things. Yeah. And this tweet is so long that I can't even read the whole thing because we no. are already at an hour in this episode and uh, this would take another hour. So I'm going to truncate it in a way that I think gets to the heart of what the tweet is all about. Uh, I will include it. And I urge you to read the entire thing because it is frankly unhinged. And I don't know this person, I hope that they are well, uh, because this tweet might argue otherwise. And so the tweeter in this uh, case is called Blue Shirt Blonde, and they start writing this. Okay, I figured out why the ESPN announcing has been driving me so insane, 
after being able to sync up Sam Rosen's radio call with the game last night. MSG, and I'd say most other regular season teams and regional announcing, is an actual play-by-play. Obviously important on the radio, but it's the same way on TV. They throw in a few jokes and a couple of good stats, but they are there to provide verbal context to actual gameplay. It is helpful. I'm going to stop right there. In what way is a Sam Rosen (laughs) called game described like a couple of good stats provide verbal context to actual gameplay? Like Sam Rosen and Joe McLeddy both call games with blue and white and red pom-poms in each of their hands. I'm surprised they could even hold a microphone if they had or a pencil if they had to. Like, I'm sorry, this this broad the Rangers broadcast group is easily one of the most homerific in the entire league. <laughs> like these guys have never had a bad thing to say about a Ranger ever in their entire history. And Sam Shtick is beyond help, really, frankly. Uh so I don't know where this person's coming from, but it's a little nuts. Uh you sent this to me and again, so like when you read this and your eyes started to glaze over and you maybe started to speak in tongues or your brain started to short circuit, <laughs> like what like what did you what did you, what stuck out to you? Because I can't read the whole thing, but like what stuck out to you the most from this this person's like look at the breakdown between what MSG does and what ESPN does as as far as hockey broadcasting? So this isn't this is the the kind of magnum opus of the uh this genre because there mm. there were a lot of Ranger fans who were really pissed at the McDonough Ferraro broadcast team and the ESPN, yeah. right? As we've said, right. which is crazy because like Ray Ferraro is uh, like inarguably the most universally beloved, I think, broadcaster yes. in hockey. I think Absolutely. there's if every time that he's on, people say like he's my favorite, and it doesn't matter who if you're in the Northeast of the United States, doesn't matter if you're in. Winnipeg doesn't matter if you're in Florida. Mm. Everybody seems to think that Ray Ray is the best. He's smart. He knows when to kind of jump in and out. He he's he's very just he's very very good at what he does. Mm. Sean McDonough, what a, he's if you don't think he calls a good game because he's you know he's he, maybe he's like a little s- monotone whatever that's fine. Um, but I think it, when you're looking at ESPN's stable of broadcasters these this is their a team if you want to say you put bob with shoes in in there instead of mcdonough whatever mm. but as you said the, the rain what stuck out to me is like so ranger fans are are looking at these two guys and they're thinking that they're attacking the new york rangers because right. they're pointing out when things are the rangers are doing or that uh that aren't going well or that the panthers are doing that are going well and and in this series um the the ice was tilted against the Rangers. I think everybody saw that. And so naturally the broadcast is going to point out the Florida Panthers are playing better than the Rangers. And it's really hard for Ranger fans to hear and comprehend this because as you said, Sam and Joe call the game as if James Dolan is sitting in the broadcast booth <laughs> with them because he probably is. Yeah. And if you say anything about any of the players that is bad, it's, it's a poor reflection on James because he says to Chris Drury, whether or not he can go and get that player if that news right. made. So they are very afraid of criticizing the Rangers. The Rangers could lose 5-1 at 10 p.m. Eastern time puck drop in San Jose. And so the game's concluding at 12.30 in the morning. Um, nobody's watching it anymore. And they will still call it um, as if James Dolan is watching and listening because he is. So it'll be instead of saying, yep, you know, the, the Rangers didn't have it at the Shark Tank tonight. Tough loss. For the Rangers, uh, they play in Anaheim on Tuesday night. We'll see you then. It's, oh boy, Joe, that was a hard fought. The scoreboard just doesn't really reflect how this game went. The Rangers gave it their all once again. They're the good guys here, and they fell 5-1 because you can't win them all, but they really won when you look at the grand scheme of things because they're still the New York Rangers, and the other team is the San Jose Sharks, and we'll send it over to uh, Steve and, and the rest right. of Joe, John Giannone, who will tell you how the Rangers were just unlucky to lose five, one tonight in San Jose. So when, when you, when you, all you do is watch those broadcasts over yeah. and over and over and over again for a year, you get convinced that this team is infallible. And then when someone like Ray Ferraro points out, Oh man, you know, Jacob Truba shouldn't have tried to elbow Evan Rodriguez through the board there. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe right. should have played defense and Sam Bennett wanted to score a huge goal against you guys. 
you know, that stuff will stick with you and it'll piss you off because you're not mm. conditioned to hear it. And like I said, this is this person is not the only one who is tweeting like this. It is just they took it to the next level yeah. of uh, of what uh, of of like that condition. And and I think what it's funny to point out here is that the ma- like Master Leaf Theater, we're we're always talking about like sports writers uh, mm. in these situations. But I just think it's kind of appropriate that it's flipped to to more, much more of a closer to the um to the fan side of things for the Rangers yeah. because it it is much more of a fan condition um I think than than a just a media condition because like the Rangers media it's very it they are writing and podcasting I'm sure and broadcasting whatever they are they are doing it in like they are just doing saying this kind of stuff right. um that we're talking about just with a byline mm. like rick carpinello <laughs> was like flipping out at the broadcast he was the oh, athletic yeah. writer for the ranger for rangers forever he was flipping out at the broadcast the right. entire series like so it's not it's just these these people um nick and joe and blue shirt energy or wh- whatever this one is <laughs> uh they are um they are actually just doing a better job of of like giving us more flowery language than, than right. the writers do because look, the, the people who do it up in Toronto are unmatched with the way that they can, right. they can, they can express their thoughts in these kind of situations. But these New Yorkers, I mean, give it to people cause they're from New York. Like they have a way of saying this stuff, cutting to the meat of it uh, mm. better than those who are paid to do it. So right. that's yeah, why they, I think it's, they, they don't need to like dance around it the way right. that like Luke Fox would have to be right. like, why can't they just give the leaps more? Like you can't say that, <laughs> but somebody f- who is a fan of the Rangers can say that, but there's more to this tweet. There's a couple more spots oh, yeah. I want to get to here. And one of them is, is this one, which again, really seems like you're looking a little bit too closely into this where they write <clears throat> ESPN announcing seems to be more about casting a narrative while watching a game. It's less quote documentary and more quote, this film is loosely based on a true story. Uh, again, every <laughs> every Rangers game called by MSG has the same narrative. The Rangers are great. The other team is here to lose to the Rangers. <laughs> and the, all we need to see is a power play goal. That's yep. every Rangers game. Now we're going to throw it back to Steve Valaket, who's going to tell us a bunch of numbers or whatever. Like, that's that's every Rangers game. I don't understand what, like, nobody's having more of a narrative than anybody else like the the they're they're going to tell you a narrative as the game goes on because every game has its own narrative like yep. i don't the the idea that any home broadcasting crew is like cinema verite documentary play it you know straight ahead by the book style is ludicrous and the fact and and the rangers are one of the worst offenders of this right like even the, even the islanders I don't think they're as bad as as people make them out to be, but like Butch Goring is the first one to say, like, you know, people call me a homer and everything, but that was a dumb penalty by it, Pierre Engvall, you know, like, and so even he's willing to call them out on this stuff, but no, no play, you know, they're not the Rangers aren't the worst. Colorado and Anaheim, I feel, have been worse, but man, I to to think that the Rangers are somehow some sort of like, you know, again, cinema verite, just perfect, you know, right down the middle, no, no editorialism at all in a broadcast is is completely out to lunch. I don't really get it. But my favorite part of the whole thing comes at the very end. And this is where the whole thing comes together in one of our favorite phrases. And to tie it all together to the Rangers, again, is a perfect example of, of why these people feel a little bit that their team deserves everything that they get and more. And that this person also writes, hmm. if you really want to grow the game, then start giving this sport the respect it deserves. <laughs> this is after a long, long, long diatribe about why the Rangers <laughs> TV broadcast is superior to the ESPN broadcast. Yes. How on earth does this have anything to do with growing the game and respect. giving the sport their respect? I, the, for, I'm sorry, but like, I don't give a shit that the game is not growing. That's not my problem. I'm not Gary <laughs> Bettman. I'm not a TV executive. I don't work for ESPN or MST. I don't give a shit. I don't care about growing the game. And frankly, neither should anybody else. That is not my problem. 
like, I don't even I don't even care that much that this podcast grows. Like I'm happy with what we're doing. It's great. People listen to us. We have a very steady audience. They like us. We like them. That's it. It's okay. Like I just I don't understand like why everything. And th- you talked about this before. Like hockey, only hockey has this. Other sports don't do this. No other sport constantly just eye bleedingly over and over and over and over again talks about growing the game. Why? 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 Why do we need to grow the game? Why can't we just play? I, I'm really hoping. No, I, I don't have a problem with the Oilers, but like, and they're up two nothing on the Dallas Stars right now. And of course, if they win, it'll be Oilers Panthers in, in the finals. I, I really hope Dallas pulls this out because if it does, it is going to be seven games of very entertaining hockey in between about a month and a half of this is the worst thing that could have happened to the NHL. <laughs> like a Dallas Florida Stanley cup final is the death knell for hockey. Like nobody's going to watch this. It's going to be, you know, completely ignored by everybody. And that's a real shame because those two teams would have a lot of fun. If it's Edmonton, obviously, you know, the Canadian media is going to love it, but how many people on in the U S are going to watch? I don't know. How many people even know what the Edmonton Oilers are? Oh, we didn't even talk about, I'm not even going to go look for it, but like there was a tweet. Uh, I want to say it was by Rachel Dory. I'm not even sure saying that like, wow, it's so weird that the, the Florida Panthers can like walk around outside and not get recognized <laughs> yes, in New York city. Yes. Dude, nobody gives a shit yes. here. Nobody gives oh, a shit God. about that. Can you imagine I, two guys in the street? Oh, Hey, look at that. Those guys are the Florida Panthers. And then the other guy being like, who the hell are the Florida Panthers? Like nobody yeah. cares. This is someone in our group chat was like, yeah, Brady Schneider could walk outside of the garden right. in his full Ranger gear and nobody would stop <laughs> right. him. Right. There's 8 million people in this city. Like, oh, someone cares. must be at a costume party. Right. Like, oh, it's so good. Come on. Give me a break. It's, it's, and I love that this, this, the idea of re- showing the game respect is, hmm. he, he, oh, how, how would you show the game respect? Well, by having the Rangers broadcast crew right. call, the, call the game. We need more Sam respect. Rosen and Joe Micheletti yeah. to show the yeah. game respect. Okay. Yeah, no, that's, that's how you do That's how you call a hockey <laughs> game. That's how you call it respectfully is you have the Rangers as cast as the good guys by Sam and Joe because they are the good guys. <laughs> and and you, you, you wonder why people get to this point. And then you remember back to one part of the season. And I'm very happy to bring mm. it up under these circumstances because I was hoping I would get to do it. When the Islanders played the Rangers and Adam Pellick and Mika Zibanejad collided at the red line mm. at yep. uh, UBS Arena, and Peter Laviolette after the game said that it was a disgusting, dirty player, whatever yep. it was. And then the next morning, the Ra- Ranger fans were like, the Ranger media, Ranger fans basically were like, "Do you? Why were you so mad about that? Are you still mad?" And he said, "Well, I, wa- I expected more th- power plays in the third period." Yes, and we're yep. like. Thank you for saying the quiet part out loud. We didn't get our prerequisite power plays this right. in that game, and that's why I I was mad because we didn't get the power the, our usual power play when we're when we're down three yeah. two in the third period, and we need yeah. a, we need a goal. Like we usually get three or four, and we only got one with like six minutes left that the Islanders killed. Why didn't we get our other ones? <laughs> it's 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 so when you hear this stuff and you hear your coach say it, you're like, right. oh man, that's right. And I and Sam and Joe probably were saying the same thing on the broadcast. Mm-hmm. And now I have Sean McDonough telling me that when Keandre Miller turned that puck over at the blue line, it was his fault and a bad play. That is an attack on the that is the attack on the game. He's setting the game back a decade. He might as well just take the skates off these guys and make them play on on mulch or something if he wants right. to set the game back this far. This is it, it. So when you when you put it all together, this tweet makes sense. When you put together the fact that this fan base is sold something completely different from reality the reality that every other fan base lives, which is that, yeah, you lose. Yeah. Your team loses. It's one team wins the Stanley cup at the end of the year and it's not yours and it's not mine. And Mm. it's not preordained in the stars because 30 years ago it happened and we had to hear about it over and over and over again. And it's not going to be given to you. Like everything on this roster was like, you guys were given these things. You were, you didn't earn them. You were given these things and they helped you earn your way to this, Mm. to this point. And now that it's over, you can't like just be given a second chance. It's almost like they're just waiting for someone to be like, uh, okay, you know what? Let's do it again. Play game six over again. <laughs> we'll, you guys, we'll give you that. Right. We'll give you that one. That's it. After that, it's over. You know, yeah. like we, right. we can't cut, keep helping. Cut. Let's, yeah. let's do it again. Yeah. yeah exactly. Like they're, <laughs> they're expecting this. It's, and, and you, and you wonder why that that's the, the, um, the way that they think. And then you think, Oh, well, it's because their coach said that they didn't get enough power plays in the third yeah. period, yeah. which is uh, what uh, the criticism of this team the entire season is like, yeah, you guys, 
are just living and dying on the power play. Your power play is really good and it bails you out. You're, the power play and the goalie bails you out every every right. game. And yeah. at some point, one of those things might disappear and you're shit out of the luck. And then that yeah. did happen. Like the goalie was still incredible, but the power play went completely ice cold and yeah. your good players started to struggle. Right. Because I you're believe the number good. was one one for fifteen. Yeah. I believe was the power plays. Yeah, and and oh, was you know what? And it, another um, kind of feather in the cap of 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 this psychological breakdown that we're doing here <laughs> is that when when you hear Ranger fans talk about the struggles of the series, it's all my God, you know, Panarin again, another soft play up, another right. another poor performance from Mika. Like right. these guys were incredible for these guys, this team all season long. And it was never, guys. There was another team that was playing really well that yeah. stopped you yeah. guys. Like that's what that's yeah. what that's how this works. Like you don't you don't show up. You're not the Rangers. The other team just goes, oh my god, we're playing the Rangers. How we're mm. not going to beat them? They're the Rangers. It would be right. it would be wrong. Yeah, I mean, Bar- I mean honestly, uh, I I sometimes think that way. I'm like, oh my god, the do the Panthers mm. know that they need to beat the Rangers? Like, are they going to care <laughs> to beat the Rangers enough because they're the Rangers? And and right, I realize it's because I've been exposed to them. Yeah, I mean, uh, Sasha Barkov just spent the entire playoffs just kind of shutting shutting down the other team's best center. Right. Know, so, uh, but yeah, so, all right, we, we are going very long here, uh, but we are going to finish with, with one final tweet. And I'll let you read this one because, again, you sent this to me before. Uh, we should talk about the Panthers. We can't criticize other teams, uh, the broadcasters, for not talking about the Panthers and without talking about the Panthers ourselves. And, uh, you know, obviously this is Ranger Peace Theater, but this whole thing started with master leaf theater. And so we are going to throw it back to a particular leafs writer for uh, something that really gets to the heart of <laughs> what the leafs and their Leafs fans are thinking as they watch other teams make, you know, all the way back to the Stanley cup, make back to back Stanley cup final runs after the Leafs have not been to the cup final at all uh, since 1967. Uh, they always have their eyes on what really, really matters. And so Mike, will you please read, read this final tweet in this first episode? of ranger peace theater i will yes it is uh by david alter um d alter on twitter uh who I, I, has he featured yet no not he's at like all in the triple a he's in the trip yes. like he's he's coming he's coming yeah. he's pitching he's pitching really well down there and he'll have his moment it's coming mm. uh, he has i don't think he's really found his um his yeah niche his niche. yet right, yeah. yeah like yeah these guys you know we got yeah. jonas digging through the you know, Dubas is garbage. And, <laughs> uh, you know, Luke Fox, Juke Fox doing his thing. So he, mm. he hasn't just found it yet, but he's close. And so yeah. it's, it's, hap- I'm happy to have him debut uh, with his tweet, which is quote, tweeting a picture from sports center that says uh, for the fifth straight year, Florida team has advanced the Stanley cup final. And his tweet says no state income tax conference champions. <laughs> Those are some of the sourest grapes you're ever oh. going to hear in a tweet. It's you so know, good. You know, we'd have we'd have back to back cup final appearances too. If you yeah. know, you have to pay taxes, and you know, obviously John Tavares is probably sitting right behind him, nodding like, "Yeah, you know, you're telling me, man, I'm out here fighting the good fight." You know, trying to get that fixed up here, but uh, yeah, that's too funny. Man, that's so good. No state tax. Oh my, no state income tax cha- conference Amazing. champions, and it's yeah, like it. It's a great convergence of of the two cinematic universes here right um i know that happens uh, right in in these these, mm, sure. these uh, movies so yeah these they, they show up in, in in one another's uh editions mm. and i it's another it's it's like the growing the game thing right it's this only started to become a thing yeah a few years ago when everyone's like huh like they don't have to pay taxes down there in Florida. I just realized when, mm. you know, whoever spurned the Leafs right. decide, decided to sign with like, oh, you know what it was? It's because the Lightning were kicking the shit out of them in right. the playoffs. They're like, oh, yeah. god damn it. Like how, oh, they're, they're doing it because they don't have to pay income Actually, tax? I, you, you, right team, but wrong situation. I think it was Stamkos. It was, it was Stamkos. When Stamkos re-signed with the Lightning right. rather than left for the Leafs. The whole thing was yes. about he didn't have to pay tax. So a $9 million contract is like, you know, right. $9 million as opposed to $9 million with contract with the Leafs. He'd be making like six and a half or something like and, that. Like and that. nobody, nobody ever points out to the people, the people who are complaining about this once again, <laughs> as I was saying about like Ranger fans pointing to the LTIR stuff. The only people I hear complain about this mm. are Leafs media people. 
like national media people bring it up every once in a while, but they're you know cu- coming from the Leafs universe. I hear from Ranger fans, and they they love to talk about Vegas and the LTIR and the no no incomes tax. You won't hear it from these other fan bases that are just like, yeah, I'm happy to be in the NHL. I'm happy that the New York <laughs> Islanders exist. Right. And you guys, sure, you might have to pay an income tax, like a higher income tax. These your your Austin Matthews might have to give back some of his salary uh, to the uh, to the Canadian government. Mm. But you're the Toronto Maple Leafs. Like you have more advantages than any other team in the league because of the amount of money you could spend outside of the salary cap. Yeah, you have to. I'm sorry you have to spend the same amount of money as everybody else. Sorry the salary cap exists because we can't have like the Columbus Blue Jackets just completely disappear or the Islanders (laughs) disappear. Like we need these teams to to stay solvent. I'm sorry that there can't be eight teams in Toronto, eight in New York City, and then, you know, a couple in Boston, maybe Montreal. But you guys have the same, like you, you guys have the, whatever money these players would be giving, uh, losing on their check right. to the state income tax or income tax, whatever in Canada, they're making up for it by being a Toronto fucking Maple Leaf. Yeah. Like they're go, they're getting endorsements. They're, they're getting mm. huge deals. Otherwise, like they're getting lavishly. T- How many times do we hear about, oh man, the late Maple Leafs, like they're, mm sports psychology department is incredible <laughs> like they, they take care of their players better than everybody yeah because they have more money than any other team so they can yeah. spend it on scouting and for taking care of their players and all that stuff so like there are advantages and disadvantages in every market mm. just because a couple teams in florida are winning now doesn't mean that and, and vegas too like it doesn't mean that this is what's ch- changing the league and this, the cards aren't stacked up against your favorite team, David Alter. Like they're right. not. They're they're not stacked <laughs> up against James Dolan's New York Rangers. Right. They are just. It's just part of being in a league. Like the fucking yeah. Vancouver Canucks have to fly thousands yeah. and thousands and thousands of more miles than any right. other team in the league. Basically, like you're in the your division. Like you, you, they stay. You guys are staying in one time zone. Basically, like the Canucks yeah. are flying everywhere. The Winnipeg Jets play in Winnipeg. Like right. that. Like there's every team has disadvantages, and this this is the cr- this is the crux of what you you're getting here. Like the mm. Florida Panthers are really good, but they're cheating because the state of Florida is no in state income tax. And by the way, the Panthers just got good. Like where were people yeah. complaining right. about this? Yeah. a decade ago. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, it's um, you know, I, I mean, the thing is, like we've been saying this whole time, is like these teams for whom the NHL has, I mean, rolled out the red carpet or has elevated to a position of, of great importance. Uh, it's not enough. <laughs> it's just not, not enough, enough for them. It's yeah. not enough for them. You know, the, 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 fact fact the cards that, are stacked up against us. Exactly. The fact that the Rangers dominate and old Rangers players dominate every halftime show and broadcast team in the nat, you know, or national broadcast, uh, is not enough. The fact that the Leafs dominate every conversation is not enough. The fact that the Penguins dominate every conversation that's not about the Leafs is not enough. There, it's never enough. It's never enough. And we, the other teams, have to get what we get. And like you said, for the Panthers, this is their second year in a row making the Cup final. It, they lost last year in five games, and then we have spent a whole summer, you know, uh, you know, celebrating the Golden Knights and their rapid rise to Stanley Cup. And Bill Foley saying they wanted to win a cup within six years and they did it or whatever it was. I don't remember. But like maybe now they can get some of the spotlight. Like it's not an accident that these guys are here. And, you know, I mean, I'm not a Panthers fan. Again, I'm hoping for Kyle Posto to win a cup. That'd be great. But like if this is what it takes for a team that's not elevated to get that kind of treatment, well, then we're all screwed because <laughs> it's not going to happen. It didn't happen for the Islanders, uh, although I, I guess it kind of did like. There were people picking them to win the cup after that second straight run to the conference finals. Uh, but again, that was a hard thing to do. Like they, they had to make it so that you had to pay attention to them. You couldn't just, they were not a fluke. They didn't just by accident show up in a, you know, the bubble and uh, lose in the, in the semifinals. They got there again uh, and you had to pay attention to them. And then of course the next season, everything fell apart. So hopefully that the, I would hate for that to happen to somebody, but uh, I was listening to some friends of mine who do, uh, the uh, Blackhawks podcast, and uh, they made a great point that 
you know, Peter Laviolette always has a good first season with a team whenever he takes over, and then it's sort of diminishing yeah. returns after that. So I'm kind of hoping they're right about this. Yeah. It will be fun to see that happen again. And, and to kind of take this into that direction, like more, mm. less um, uh, kind of ranting and, and more sober analysis on, on where our rival is, is, is standing in next year and how it kind of impacts the Islanders is, mm. like you said, that, that Laviolette situation is – um, a lot of people believe it to be a thing, and mm. it, the 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 numbers show it. He he seems to wear on teams. Um, then you you look at the fact that like I understand why Ranger fans thought that this was the year is because it sort of had to be because everything was was bouncing their way. They got right. the career year out of Artemi Panarin when he was thirty two. Uh, Trocheck, whose contract for if he had signed for any other team would have been derided as like, oh, you're going to give Vincent Trocheck this kind of long-term deal. Right. But he has a, he has a really good second season after a bad first one. Mm. Um, uh, obviously Chesterkin was really good and, uh, like everybody was healthy again, except for Hedl. Like they, they, mm. they caught a lot of breaks to go to where they did. But now next year just doesn't like none of that stuff is guaranteed again. I think that's what's hitting these, yeah. these fans here. And it hits you like a ton of bricks. Like, Oh man, what if our Tammy Panarin doesn't put up 120 points next season? Right. Um, and what if the power play doesn't clip at the third? The the power play and the penalty kill were both top three in the league. What if <laughs> what if one of them falls off? What if Trocheck <laughs> right. doesn't isn't as good? Like, th- there's so much here. And oh, and by the way, <laughs> screw what I just said about sober analysis. <laughs> These people had the audacity to complain about the way this team was covered when. Starting in February into June, we had to hear four months about Matt fucking Rempe. <laughs> wow. We I, didn't even talk about him. We we are in an hour and a half right now, and this is the first time we've we've mentioned this. I can't believe which is which really says everything about him as a player, right? Like he did, he didn't even come into my mind. I just pulled up their cap friendly page. I'm like, okay, look, this is this. I'm like, oh my god, this fucking. He he didn't even play in in the last. No, he played two minutes and thirty seconds in game five. Two minutes and thirty seconds. That's Mm. Eric Bolton. (laughs) They and 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 once again, here we Mm. are. The Rangers are treated so unjustly and unfairly by the media and the way they're covered. If any other team in the league was dressing a legitimate goon, an enforcer, uh, right. an extinct role in this league, they would be called knuckle draggers and be right. thrown out of the, the NHL, like completely ignored. Mm. It would be treated as like they would almost be canceled, honestly, right. <laughs> well, because it's the Rangers. It became reppy mania. I'm not yeah. surprised. Would, would you be shocked if we don't get a fifth Ranger documentary? And sometime this summer, ESPN just puts out a Matt Rempe. 30 minutes special on, on right. his first the the rookie rempy or something right. and they're going to go around and ask uh everybody else what they think about when they see number 73 on the ice just yep. like they did with uh matt barzell they and did it i think say, they asked bart yeah. for Hagee or reinhardt and he's like i don't know uh, yeah. <laughs> same same thing like yeah right. it's yeah wow yeah you guys you guys really caught the shit end of the stick with the way you were covered when you had a a, a insanity like Right. phenomenon for a guy who played two minutes and 30 seconds in game five of a play like right well wow. uh, why why do you think everybody's <laughs> celebrating the fact that you're out it's because we had to hear matt rempe right that would be yeah. like if the islanders are playing on espn mm. and emily kaplan comes back from the break and they're like all right and, and you know here's emily to talk to patrick Wah about uh I don't know Ross, yeah, Ross Johnston or or mm. Sebastian Aho or something like some whoever's going to have the littlest impact on a game. <laughs> yeah, Matt Martin, here's Matt Martin, right? Patrick, you know what's it like to having this guy in your lineup? Like, what do you mean he's our fourth line four? He's going to play the the lowest amount of ice time in this game. Why mm. are you asking me about him? Do you want? Don't you, do you mean Matt Barzell? Do you mean Bo mm. Horvat? Aren't you? Do you mean Artemi Panarin? Who are you asking me about? Because yeah. the ESPN broadcasters are broad. They are all. Like there are so many Ranger fans in the ESPN system that they're thinking, oh man, we got I want to hear about mm. Rempe on my own broadcast. God, it was so bad. It's so funny. Um, yeah, I don't know. 
I don't know. Uh, but David Alter, by the way, I just saw my own Twitter account it's still going on about taxes, but whatever. <laughs> uh, we, I think I think we've done enough. I think we've covered uh, a lot in this first episode of Ranger Peace Theater. There is even more. We have Mark Canizaro of the New York Post, wonder you know, wishing that, saying that Igor Shosturkin was so brilliant he deserved another Game Seven at MSG. You know, that's what he deserved. Uh, well, he he had three and he lost two of them. So maybe, I'm not sure. Maybe exactly tomorrow during won. like locker room cleanout day, they can just have him skate a lap of honor. Right. All uh, the Ranger fans that couldn't get into the, the actual playoff games because <laughs> the, tic- the tickets go to leave Schreiber and, yeah. and uh, you know, whoever whoever just won the, the PGA championship, <laughs> you know, they, they, they couldn't get in because of those people. They can come in and cheer. They could scream Igor's name out. Mm. Uh, oh man that panthers chant at, at him was so good at the end the fan <laughs> man I, you know what we we love the you said like uh you know i'm not a panthers fan whatever i kind of am a panthers fan at this point we owe that team so much man leafs funny. yeah seriously. last year this year this rangers team um so like matt yeah. kachuk all those guys obviously oposo right man no thank you thank you panthers um thank you panthers we, we also have of course the great larry brooks uh writing that they're gonna have tough decisions on jacob truba Mika Zibanejad and Chris Kreider. And when all three of those guys are playing for the Rangers next year, Larry's going to just talk about how they should all have their numbers retired. So that'll <laughs> be a lot of fun. And then uh, over at The Athletic, Peter Ball uh, wrote uh, an article about, for the New York Rangers, the magic runs out and reality sets in. Yes, the magic has run out in that <laughs> Igor stopped making way one less save than the other guy. And yeah. Yeah, so you know what? You know what? It was perfect. That I, I know you don't watch the games. I do, and it's yeah. it wasn't good for me. I was the whole time I'm wrestling with my with myself. I'm like, why am I putting myself through this? It's so embarrassing. And <laughs> exactly, why I don't watch. Yeah, right. bad. It's just it's terrible. The conversation yeah. you're having with yourself while watching a team that isn't the team you root for play against <laughs> another team that isn't the team you root for, and you're living and dying with it. My heart's beating through my chest. Mm. Like my mouth is dry. It's, mm. you know, I, somebody should have arrested me last night, but mm. it's, um, there was a play where the puck bounced off the end boards, right. um, behind Bobrovsky mm-hmm. came out, uh, back off the boards through the crease behind Bobrovsky again. Mm-hmm. And it missed his skate by like a centimeter. If it, it right. the Rangers would have tied the game up, off of a wide shot that bounced off the end board, then hit off Sergei Bobrovsky's skate and then into the net. Like they were that close a centimeter away from right. tying the game up on that goal in game six of an elimination <laughs> game, which would have been the most Rangers thing ever. But <laughs> that isn't even the best part. That puck then continued on and it was bouncing oh, and it Christ. bounced off of, it bounced over Mika Zibanejad's stick. He had a wide open net to like mm-hmm. just bury it into and it bounced over his, his stick. <laughs> and right after that, they were talking, they were just talking about how, you know, that's the type of bounce you just don't get when you're gripping your stick too tight as mm. Mika was like, it's tough, like whatever, when you're not getting those bounces and McDonough and Ferrara were kind of saying like, they, they, they've been the worst team in the series, mm. but one bounce like that, if it goes their way. And as that was going on, I like looked on Twitter and so many people just being like, we're just not getting any bounces this season, this series. <laughs> and all I was thinking was it, it's it's so worth it to hear them finally say that yeah. out loud. Like we're just not getting a bounce because they uh, they just expect to. They just expect yeah. for Jacob Truba to shoot a puck off the back end boards and for it to hit off the goalie skate mm. and go in and tie a, an elimination game. Yeah. Like that's just what happens with this team. A, a team that's gotten every bounce, every bounce all season long. Oh, Ping pong I, balls, pucks. Yeah, I, I forgot to mention cap loopholes. <laughs> and I forgot to mention also the other team shitting their own pants, which in that right. athletic story talks about that great comeback win at MetLife Stadium against the Islanders. Yes, that great comeback win that the Islanders was there for the Islanders was their 18th blown third period lead yes. in this in this series. So, well, who could have possibly so, seen this yeah, coming? So unlike the Islanders to do something like right. that. Yeah. So again, this is what happens when you're when you're a Ranger. You, it, you know, it just, stuff just happens to you. And when it yeah, stops those, happening, you get really those poor mad. Rangers. Yeah, exactly. Those poor poor Rangers are. Yeah, Barkley yeah. Goodrow scoring like <laughs> six wonder goals in a playoff series. Like that's right. just the stuff that happens. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and that, right. That's that's normal. And you should have definitely expect that to happen. And <laughs> oh man, yeah. this has felt great. I've I've great, been man. waiting for this for for months now. It's yeah. That's you know think about like the playoffs started April fifteenth or seventeenth, whatever it was. Mm. Um, it we're 
a month and, and a half into it. The Rangers didn't lose a game for the first two weeks um, because they were playing a shitty Capitals team and then the, the Hurricanes team. You want to talk about shitting your pants. Like, they just right. shat themselves. And, right. And you know what's great, though? Mm. The Rangers finished the playoffs. And so they started 7-0. to And then they, they, they wind up winning um, uh, eight. They win 10 games, right? So mm. then they then went three and six. Right. In their last nine games. And nobody's like bringing that up. Like, oh no, we just, we, the magic ran out. No, you guys went three and six in your last playoff games and then lost. That's fucking funny. magic. <laughs> magic. The magic, of, the magic of playing the Capitals and the Hurricanes. Yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Unbelievable. <sighs> so, all right. Well, if you are still listening to us, thank you for listening to this first ever edition of Ranger Peace Theater. I'm sure we'll be doing it again at some other point. Uh, I guess I'll play the music now. Uh, Because I worked so hard on on setting it up. Uh, But thank you very much for listening again. We we weren't expecting to do this episode, but I'm really glad we did. Uh, We got a lot of a lot of hatred out, which is always great. Maybe some uh, some Devils fans or caps fans or some other fans will will appreciate this as well uh but it also allows me to mention that we do have a new episode of weird islanders podcast coming out on friday uh it's our penultimate episode it's this one and then uh the next one after that is our season finale the live episode but this one's great don't sleep on it it's one of the better ones we've done all season long about a player who played for a team that we talked about tonight so there you go Woo, mystery uh, but it's a great episode, and uh, and check it out. It, it really came out really well. And uh, not a lot of video links, unfortunately. I talk about that in the episode, but uh, it really came out great. Uh, thank you again for listening. Uh, make sure you sign up at patreon.com slash islandersanxiety for ad-free episodes and bonus content. Follow us on Twitter at Isles Anxiety Pod. Subscribe to us, to subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, Audible.com, iHeartRadio, YouTube, YouTube Music, and wherever you get your podcasts. Leave us a review, too. We can use a, a few more uh, reviews over at Apple Podcasts as well. Um, our theme song is Morning Haze by Family Dinner. Listen to more of their music at Bandcamp and Spotify. Read Lighthouse Hockey every single day for most up-to-date Islanders news and discussion. Islanders Anxiety Podcasts are part of the Fans for a Sports Network. Shop VintageIceHockey.com. Try Wines from the Pinot Project. Happy Pride to everyone. And happy birthday to our patron, Betsy, who uh, left a message saying it was a birthday. She's getting a birthday podcast. So happy birthday, Betsy. This is for you. I hope you enjoyed it. And oh, What a uh, good birthday present. What to, a great birthday have, like, present. Just yeah. Not have to worry about a game seven. Oh, my Seriously. God. Seriously. Oh, my God. That's that, oh, yeah, that right there is worth its weight in all the birthday presents in the world. But there you go, Betsy. Happy birthday. Michael Leboff, where can everybody find you on Twitter? Uh, you can find me at the Big Lee Basket with two E's. Follow Mike at the Big Lebowski. Read and listen to his work in Action Network. Follow him now because the T20 Cricket Tournament starts on Monday. You're going to want to follow Mike for oh all God. your cricket updates. He's got the press pass. He's ready to go. He's at Eisenhower Park. And uh, I have a feeling this is going to be a lot better, knowing that you're not going to run into any you know, Rangers fans yeah. or something like that. Yeah, can, <laughs> now, now I can watch my cricket in peace. And Exactly. Um, yeah, I, I, I was with um, Emily and Isla today. Uh, in Garden City, we just I, I went to go pick up my press pass and we let Isla run around at Eisenhower mm. uh, while I did that. And um, we ran into uh, a player of, from India, like a, a one of their players. And mm. um, I'm I shit you not. And this is such a good story. And I'm, I, I feel guilty telling it at the tail end of a podcast because I know listenership goes down, but it's well, really just gets to the crux of it. We do have to do a, a country club atmosphere. Yeah, next I'll, month, I'll, this I'll month, retell so. the story, <laughs> but it's it'll it's quick, but it's so good. It's so we're we're sitting at like a coffee shop bakery in Garden City. I was eating a cupcake, and this player like just is walking on the sidewalk, and an Uber driver, uh, who I'm assuming is Indian because this is an Indian player, gets out of his car, puts his hazards on in traffic. Like there's this is a main road, Franklin Avenue in Garden City. And doesn't pull over, like, there's no way to pull over onto a shoulder. There's no shoulder. So he just gets out of his car, mm. puts his hazards on. There's a cop behind his car. The the social media team for the Indian cricket team is yelling, like, police, police, like, letting him know, like, there's a cop right behind you. And he's like, I don't care. He went because he, he just wanted to get a picture with this player so badly <laughs> that he was, like, totally okay with getting a ticket for it. So uh, wow. it was an insane scene. And while this is all going on, like, there are, like, these bushes up around the, the seating area of this little coffee shop. So, th- 
nobody knows this is going on. Me and Emily are watching because I've I've told her like I'm like this is crazy that this is mm. this player is right here. His name's Sa- Sanju Samson, and I'm like he's right there. Like we're watching this whole scene unfold, but it's it's like nothing is happening to everybody else at this cafe. They're just going on drinking their coffees, eating their right. their pastries, and this right. this incredible scene is just developing right next to them, but they can't it's see so it funny. Th- perfectly because of the bushes. Oh, yeah. it's so good. This guy's um, gonna stop traffic. Yes, <laughs> just to do this. To get a there could have been a, like, guy. there right. could have been a. I just know it's an Uber car because of the the license plate. There could have been somebody in the car, like being like, right. "Why is my driver yeah. getting out?" Here? <laughs> I mean, again, not to go off on the whole thing here late in the podcast, but we we literally talked about this on the Country Club atmosphere. We set this whole thing up. It's like this is the world's second most most watched sport. And yeah. this is there are a lot of very very famous dudes that play this, particularly for India, which is obviously one of the bigger teams. And this this might happen. Like there's some you might not realize it if you live in Nassau, but like there are going to be some very famous people walking around that are huge cricket players that you have never heard of. <laughs> yeah. That you know somebody next to you or somebody might know, and and they're gonna this is the going to be the time of their life. Meanwhile, uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people saying what the hell is going on over there over at eisenhower park but i can't wait to hear your stories i can't wait to see your yep. tweets and uh it's gonna be a lot of fun and again anything is better than a uh rangers game seven or god forbid a, a rangers stanley cup oh. final appearance uh but i'm glad you mentioned isla because she has some words like father like daughter she has some words about the rangers here too so i'm going to throw these in at the end thank you very much for listening we will talk to you again very shortly uh, don't forget about Weird Islanders this week, and uh, we will talk to you again later. All right, take care, and take it away, Isla. All right, say bye-bye, Rangers. Bye-bye, Rangers. Bye-bye, Rangers. Bye-bye, Rangers. Bye-bye, Rangers. Better luck next year, Rangers. Bye-bye, Rangers. Bye-bye, Rangers. Bye-bye, Rangers. Bye-bye, Rangers. Bye-bye, Rangers. Bye-bye, Rangers. Bye-